The supplies for this first DIY are super minimal. All you need is a canvas, some flowers or leaves, and parchment paper. So I gathered these from outside, literally went around, picked flowers, leaves, petals, whatever I thought was interesting outdoors, and all you have to do is press them. And how you do this is you lay down a piece of parchment or wax paper, and you lay down your florals or like botanical pieces that you found, another piece of parchment paper on top, and just layer some heavy books on top of it. And I actually kept this pressed for about four days under this stack of books you see right here. And once they were all completely pressed, they looked like this. And this is how they're going to look and they're actually gonna retain the shape and color, which is extremely nice. You basically pressed all of the life out of them and this is what they look like now. So I layered them on my canvas, found out where I wanted to place them, and just sort of maneuvered it around for a while and found out I love this variation here, glued them down with hot glue, and you are done with your super inexpensive canvas. <laughs> DIY number two, all you're gonna need is some sea glass spray paint, a glue stick, a vase, ruler, paper, and scissors. So I absolutely love the outlook of this frosted glass vase. I thought it looked so expensive and very West Elm-esque. And what I did was cut out two inch strips from paper and just cut out some triangle masks. And basically you can cut out any shape you would like out of just regular old printer paper and apply a bit of Elmer's glue stick to the back of that and just let the Elmer's glue stick dry because once this dries, it actually turns into a slightly tacky but removable masking like piece. It's kind of like a post-it note if you guys know what that is. Um, it's basically a post-it note. You can put it on there and remove it. So I actually place these down and wherever the paper is, the spray paint is not going to go on the glass. So I then brought it to a box and sprayed a layer of this Krylon sea glass spray paint, which I got at Michael's for about $4 with a coupon code or a coupon. And then you just pull off the little masking pieces and it shows the clear glass through. And I would highly suggest that you also put a mask on the top of it so that the spray paint doesn't get on the inside, but it is removable with acetone, just to let you know. <laughs> For the hanging mirror DIY, you're going to need a square mirror, some E6000, an X-Acto knife, some chain, spray paint of choice, a piece of wood, ruler, and some of those screw hooks. And what you're going to start off by doing is taking a small piece of wood and cutting it down to 12 inches in width. And I actually just found this 24 inch piece from Michaels already like this. It was sold like this for like $1.50 and I just cut it directly in half by swiping over it with an X-Acto knife a few times. I then proceeded to screw some of these little hooks in that are meant for hanging things on the ceiling or whatever they're meant for. I use them and those are gonna be what's going to hang up the jewelry. And I suggest that you screw them towards the back more um, than opposed to the front because it can split, split the wood since this, this wood is very thin. And then after I got those in, I actually sprayed both pieces of wood, even the one with the little screw hooks on it with this hammered glass spray paint. And then use my E3, E6000 adhesive, which is like super, super strong industrial cement basically, to adhere down both sides. And this is just gonna make sure that they stay super secure on top of the glass mirror. And then I just let that sit for a few minutes and, or not a few minutes, I more let it sit for overnight. And then I added on the chain as well using some big globs of E6000 adhesive. And that basically finishes off your hanging mirror with jewelry holder. <laughs> This DIY may be the easiest, but it's one of my favorites, and all you're gonna need is a lampshade, some wood clips, paint, and a hot glue gun, so super minimal supplies. And I first started off by taking my wood clips and painting them black. And um, I just painted half of them black because I actually wanted it to be a variety of wood and black. So I first started off by just gluing the plain wood clips to the very top, and I did it about every three inches. And then below that, in between, I actually glued the black clips that I did right in between the brown clips. And then I just finished off with a bit of paint on top of the black, and you're basically done. You can clip your mementos on, and that's your new lampshade. <laughs> This 
candle is inspired by the Labo candles and I'm obsessed. All you need is a tin can, a wick, some old candles, and a hammer. So again, super minimal supplies and you can reuse your candles, which is amazing. So I started off by taking my jar and literally just hammering it. I hammered it so much with a hammer, it was so much fun. Um, and I just went around the jar, gave it some nicks, and I love the rustic distressed look of this. I just think it looks so industrial and it's perfect for my apartment space as well. And after that, I went ahead and put a skillet on the stove on very low heat and took two old candles. Um, the autumn one on the right is new and used, or new and unused, but I just wanted to burn it down for this DIY. And I actually kept them on the stove for about 25 minutes until they melted down um, to wax, basically. And I pulled out the old wicks, and then basically all you're going to have to do is take them off the heat, let them sit for about 10 minutes so they're not blazing hot, and glue your wick down on the inside of your hammered container, and then simply pour the wax in. And I suggest doing this over the top of a surface where if wax gets on it, it's not a big deal. So just pour your wax in, wait for it to dry, and you have your new candle. It's definitely updated and cool. Let's get into this wall hanging and all you're going to need is some wood dowels, yarn, parchment paper, paint, and a hot glue gun. So I first started off with these wood dowels which I found at Michael's for about $3. They're just like toothpicks without the points. And the nice thing about gluing on top of parchment paper is that the hot glue peels off instantly. It doesn't stick at all. So you can glue on top of it, create shapes, and then pull them off later. So I actually created these hexagon shapes using these small wooden dowels. And I created two hexagons that were smaller or just like hexagon shapes themselves. And then I created a larger centerpiece that was actually three hexagons connected. And a cool little tip for you guys is you can actually burn down those weld points with the tip of your hot glue gun. So if you do need to like melt that down or make it look smoother or anything, if you added too much glue, use the tip to melt it down. And this is the center point right here, this like triple hexagon shape. And then all you're going to need to do is take a bit of string, yarn, whatever you wanted to use to attach and attach your shapes together. And you really have your brand new wall mobile hanging. And I think this would look so cool on a window, on a mirror, on a wall, um, anywhere you want to add a little bit of extra decor. I also forgot to mention that I actually kept it plain wood over the black paint that I was originally going to do because I liked the wood look much better. I feel like a pillow is always necessary, so I'm starting off with some jersey pillowcases, black dye, a paintbrush, and some foam cups. And I also did use a trash bag, which I'm laying down on the table right here just to protect my surface. And I'm going to lay out my foam cups or plastic cups or whatever you can just dispose of later. And I added a half cup of warm water or hot water to each cup. And then what I did after that was used the RIT powder dye, and I put one teaspoon in each cup, but I varied it. So one teaspoon in the first, two teaspoons in the second, three in the third, four in the fourth and five in the fifth so basically it's just a more concentrated dye as I go down and the sucky thing kind of about this was that when you didn't have enough of the black dye it was actually purple um, which I didn't like at first but as it dried I actually kind of grew on me and I did like the purple so keep that in mind if you're wanting a black or gray gradient you're not really gonna get it with this dye it's gonna be more purple based and all you're gonna do is take your white wide paint brush and I just use like one of those painters paint brushes that you paint a house with and it just allowed me to soak up a lot of dye at once and I created a gradient like this and that's really all. And I also did this one which I think looks so cool with the split down the center and the other half is white. In love with this. you believe me if I told you these coasters costed under two dollars to make and all you're gonna need is some foam core, some pleather fabric, scissors, an exacto knife, ruler, and E6000 adhesive. So you're first gonna start off by taking your foam board and this is literally like that project board you use for science projects and it's a foam based one and you're gonna cut them into four by four inch squares. I just found that this was the nicest size for a coaster and then I used this pleather fabric I found at Joann's on sale for a dollar for a quarter yard of it and I just 
cut out with about an inch around each edge. I did it very roughly and I E6000 adhesived the foam down to the backing and then cut off the corners like I'm doing here. So basically you're going to want a tiny bit exposed on the corner like I'm showing because when you fold it over like this, you want that corner to be pointed and you don't want it to be showing the foam core board. All I'm going to do after that is take the E6000, glue it down and then press a book on top of it so that it keeps the weight on there and just let it dry for a few hours. for this rustic bowl are so simple all you're gonna need is a glass bowl some air dry clay paint and a paintbrush so, so this is the air dry clay I actually got this at Target in the kids section it's very easy to work with I love it I'm never gonna switch back to the normal clay plus it dries in the air which is really nice compared to having to like physically go bake it in an oven you know so I took this dollar bowl from Target it's just a glass bowl and I covered it in a layer of the air dry clay and once you have your full layer on I used a little bit of water on my fingertips to just smooth the surface and I actually learned this in a ceramics class I took in high school so it's coming in handy right now but you can just use a little bit of water it smooths down the surface and it makes all cracks disappear and just everything just kind of meld a little bit better and then I used a small piece of parchment paper and a heavy object to create a new bottom for this bowl and then after that I used a paintbrush and I used the and the opposite end of the paintbrush to draw in some horizontal lines just because I wanted a little bit of texture and then once again went back in with that water to just clean up the lines and this made it look so much better like if I didn't use this it would have looked a little bit rough and jagged which it did on the top which I was able to fix with this nail file so I used a nail file to rough in or just clean off those edges and lastly went in with a little bit of paint so this is just watered down black paint and I just painted it however I felt. I did a little bit of an ombre and then also filled in all of those lines to just deepen the design and added my signature on the bottom for authenticity. <laughs> Gotta save one of my favorites for last, and all you're gonna need for this is some more foam core, an album, E6000, black cord, an X-Acto knife, and your ruler. So what you're gonna start off by doing is measuring out two 14 by 14 inch squares on your foam board. And keep in mind this foam board is literally from the Dollar Tree, so super inexpensive. And after you cut out your 14 by 14 squares, on one of them you're going to cut a window out. And how I did this was measured in one and a quarter inches on all edges, and then cut out the square it created in the center which you can see me doing right now that will create the window which you're gonna see the album through so what I did was I then cut out two half inch strips of the foam core and just whatever size because I'm actually going to fit it to length here so you're gonna lay your album down put the half inch piece down and then fit it to length so you're gonna want it to go around three edges because you're going to want the album to be able to slip through the top so I took my E6000 adhesive and glued it down to um, the album as close as I could to the album because we're gonna have a little bit of cording on the outside in between the sandwich frame and the frame backing if that makes sense you'll see what I mean in a second here so I glued those down like such and then I added another layer of glue on top of those pieces and sandwiched on the top of the frame so this is gonna finish off the frame you can slip your album in the black cord goes all the way around and you tie it in a knot, you hang it on the wall, and this was like a $2 album frame, which I am totally obsessed with. You can customize it however you'd like as well. 